Hello, I'm Lance Turner of ArkansasBusiness.com. We're back with part two of our conversation with Ken Clark of Chennault Family Therapy. In part one, we talked about a lot of the challenges that small business owners and executives are facing as we all deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we're going to talk more about those challenges and some of Ken's advice for executives and how to deal with those stressors. We're also going to talk about his Thanks a Billion project, which he's very passionate about, and learn more about what that means uh, for him, his practice, and his outlook on life and uh, dealing with stressful situations. Here's our conversation. Of this, it, it can probably seem a little bit uh, daunting, a little bit hopeless at times. Uh, what are some What are some tips and advice that you might also offer? Yeah. So um, two twofold. One's on the psychological side. One's probably on the, the business strategy side. Um, I, I'm a big believer, and this is not uh, Ken stuff. This is this is accepted neuroscience at this point. Um, that the creative part of our brain, right? Really, the, the kind of the front part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, and the back part of our brain, which which is really where fear resides, and in, in, in some of that that basic uh, human survival stuff, they can't operate at the same time. So I can't come up with creative solutions when I'm paralyzed with fear. Right, I'm not writing poetry as the the runaway car is barreling down on me in the crosswalk. Right, mm -hmm. um, so to be a leader that solves, I've got to find a way to get out of the fear mode and and get back into creativity mode. Right, this takes creative MacGyver like solutions to survive this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm a big believer uh, on, on the psychological side that gratitude is one of the easiest ways to kind of pull the lawnmower cord on the front part of the brain and get it running. Mm -hmm. That when I sit down and just look through my calendar or my text messages through the last three or four days and find people that I'm thankful for and just tell them, right, that that front part of my brain fires up and it knocks the, the, the fear part offline. Mm -hmm. And then I start creating again. So we even have our, our, our senior leadership at my company. Uh, when we start our senior leadership meetings, we actually have everybody, we've done this before the crisis, we start by writing three thank you notes. I believe that we come up with better solutions over the next two hours if everybody gets their brain centered on gratitude and then we start solving problems. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a big one is, is you've got to figure out how to not be afraid. As part of that, I think every leader needs to have their, uh, we, we all have a bucket list. Uh, we, we need to have a kind of a screw it list, if you pardon my French. We need to have a, a plan of what happens to Ken if this all burns to the ground. If it all burns to the ground, full-blown economic collapse, what's Ken going to do? And I'll tell you what Ken's going to do. Ken's either going to go work as a ski lift operator in Colorado or, or be a, a deckhand in the Cayman Islands. And we're going to give up trying to be a leader and all that stuff. And life will continue. And when I, I take that mindset that life will continue, even if I don't pull this off, even if I, uh, you know, strike out uh, at, in the bottom of the ninth with bases loaded, that life continues after that, then I stop being afraid as well and I start creating. So strategy, right, down the road where, where we want people looking. Um, I grew up in California. I grew up as a, a, a surfer kid and all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things you learn out there is in the ocean is when a big wave starts coming towards you, right, that, that the best thing you can do is paddle towards the wave, not away from it, right? If you paddle towards the wave, there's a good chance you'll make it over it before it crests. If you try and get away from it, it's going to break right on your back, right? right. And, and so that's the same thing here. There's so much about this that we can't control, right? I don't know if this thing will, will kill our businesses in the next two months or not. What I do know is if, if we do survive, right? And I believe we're going to survive as a company. I believe a lot of companies will. If we do survive, we're going to be in a much better position nine months from now if we know what we're paddling towards. So what does life look like after the crisis? What are the, what are, how's the landscape going to change? What are the disruptable opportunities? Um, where, sadly, because of, of uh, competitors going out of business or, or the landscape changing, might we grab market share or add a new line of business or revenue? And we're going to paddle full speed towards that like our life depends on it. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 60 days. I know if we make it to, to uh, you know, 180 days though, what we're doing, we're going down this road and we're gonna be the best at it. Mm -hmm. So that, those are kind of the two strategies, get unafraid and paddle like crazy towards the wave. Very good. Um, one final thing I wanna to talk to you about, uh, you have a project called the Thanks a Billion Project. I think yeah, you touched yeah. on that, some elements of that just a minute ago and, and yep. kind of talking about uh, that last question, but can you tell us about what that project is and what that's about? 
Sure. Um, so I do a lot of, of family business consulting, kind of family transition stuff, um, kind of my therapist, uh, CEO, hat combined. Um, so I was down in Texas working with a, a family business that's in transition, and um, I just had a great morning. I, I was sitting with a, with a parent and a child, both who are, are running this business and in conflict, and, and I was just in my element. I just loved it, man. I, I, I was meeting with the, the mom later, and just, you know, it was just awesome. And I had a, a moment where I was just thankful, and I thought, man, a couple of years ago, I, I would have just kept my therapist hat on, but, but I had a friend, a, a mentor, my Vistage chair, who kind of pushed me to consider getting into some executive coaching and things like that. And so I was just really thankful because I just had a great day and it wouldn't have happened if somebody hadn't have, 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 uh, lit a fire under me. So I reached out to him and this is in the middle of COVID hitting like right, right in the beginning, you know, this is early March. And, and uh, I reached out and just said, Hey, thank you. I, I, this is just a reminder that if it all burns to the ground, I'm still good at this. I could still go do this all by myself. Right. And, uh, and I noticed about two or three hours later, I completely forgot about COVID. Like it, 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 like that process of saying thank you, just, just kind of, I was on a cloud. And then the fear started creeping back in and I was laying in bed in, in a hotel in Texas and, and the thank you text came back from him. Man, that was the best thing anybody's ever said to me in a long time. Like, I, I believe in you so much. It's been an honor to work with you. And, I, and, and again, right, the fear went away, right? And then the drive home, and that kind of carried over the next day, the drive home, my brain was just in this creative space, right? Ironically, that's where the thanks a billion came from was as I'm driving home going, man, this feels so good. And, and a lot of my fear got pushed out by, by gratitude. How would we replicate that? I mean, we already kind of do it in the company. And, and so I, I started thinking, gosh, what if there were a bunch of YouTube videos that just said, here's, here's who to thank and how to thank them. And, and as, a, as a, a guy who's a therapist who doesn't like going to therapy, but is, is pretty good at it. Um, I realized that that's one of the things in particular uh, for a lot of males that, that we're not really taught how to do is give this sincere thank you to, to somebody else. So that kind of all meshed and I got back and I and, uh, was thinking about it. Um, I stayed up all night recording uh, this video that I thought was brilliant and uh, woke my wife up in the morning, 6 a.m. and said, you got to watch this. You know, <laughs> so excited of my, my crayon drawing of, a, of an right. effort here. And she looked at it and she said, mm, that's a great message, but um, the, the lighting, the camera angles, uh, did, I mean, you know, she pretty much like shot down every production aspect of it. Oh, man. And I was like, whatever, she doesn't know, you know. And so I reached out to Natalie Gadotti, who's a good friend and, and a, a buddy from Vistage. And I said, hey, what do you think of this? And she said about the same thing as my wife. She said, uh, wow, great message. Um, did, did you film that on a flip phone or something? You know, <laughs> and uh, so it circled back around in a couple of days and Natalie and I kept talking about it and, and she was, just was really excited about the project. So we kind of founded it together and that's the goal is, is to have these, it, it, it's, there's no exchange of value involved. We're not charging anybody. We are trying to start an exponential wave of gratitude. I used to be a financial planner. One of the first things my dad, a financial planner, taught me as a, a little kid was the, uh, power of doubling right so right. He, his thing he used to ask right do you want a penny uh that i double every day for 30 days or a million bucks right, right. the answer is keep doubling the penny it's worth a billion so I, I thought what 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 if we do that what if we just get more and more people to say thank you to one another every day in a country where we are in a world where we are paralyzed by fear but desperately need creative solutions it works for my company it works in my own life Let's do this. And then, so that's, that's, that's where it, it started. And we're, we're, what, five or six days in, and we've got 50,000 views almost on the first video. Wow. Uh, you know, almost 1,000 followers. Our mailing list is growing. So, um, so it, it's a message that people want to hear, and we're, we're thankful to, to shout it from the mountaintops. Fantastic. Well, Ken Clark of Chanel Family Therapy, thanks a lot for your, your advice and help today. Thanks for, for all the great reporting you're doing. We, we, we love your paper around our house. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks a lot.